Hey, welcome to Pathagonia. This is Jay. Today we're going to talk about transfusion support for patients receiving ABO incompatible allogeneic stem cell. I know it's a little bit of a niche topic, but I'm on my blood bank rotation and I thought this reiterates the importance of understanding ABO antigens and the antibodies some people have. So we're going to talk about introduction, major ABO incompatibility and complications, minor ABO incompatibility, and bidirectional ABO incompatibility and all the complications. We're going to briefly talk about transfusion during engraftment and guidance on which ABO product to give based on what the recipient and donor blood type is and what phase of the engraftment uh, the patient is in. So let's begin with the introduction. Uh, it's important to recognize that HLA matched siblings will often be ABO incompatible. Um, a patient that came across our institution was A positive, received chemo, and was receiving an allogeneic stem cell transplant from his sister, who is B positive, even though their HLA matched. So it's important to recognize that up to 50% of allogeneic stem cell transplants are ABO incompatible. And it's because they're not linked on the same region of the chromosome and even the same chromosome. ABO gene is on chromosome 9Q, HLA gene is on chromosome 6P, and RH is chromosome 1P. So what's a foolproof way to have ABO, RH, HLA identical donor? Exactly, identical twins. You got it, dude. Let's talk about major ABO compatibility. This is when the recipient has preformed antibodies against donor red blood cells. As you can see, the teal blue is anti A, because A is teal blue. I know this is really complicated and sophisticated drawings. And um, the black Y is anti B, because B is encoded in black. So uh, the complications is once you get the, um, the donor cells, there can be hemolysis at time of infusion because of these preformed antibodies, a delayed red blood cell engraftment, and pure red cell aplasia, which is less than 1% reticulocytes over a certain time period, uh, f over several months. Um, and then if you do have pure red cell aplasia, you become transfusion dependent and that can lead to secondary hemochromatosis where you might have to get therapeutic plebotomy to remove that excess iron. All right, minor ABO compatibility. This is when donor's plasma has preformed antibodies against recipient red blood cells. So here, for instance, an O donor who has anti-A, in addition to anti-B, the anti-A will target the A red blood cells but it's also important to recognize this is minor ABO compatibility because this preformed antibodies attacks the A red blood cells. But it all, but not only that, it kind of gets. I like to think of it like kind of like a dilution effect. It doesn't solely attack the red blood cells because there are other A antigens um, elsewhere, like the vessels. So that's why hemolysis at the time of infusion is one of the reasons why it's rare for minor minor ABO compatibility. So B, you have anti-A, it's going to target the A antigen on an AB cell, but also the A, anti A antigen um, in the vessels as well. And you can get passenger lymphocyte syndrome, which occurs generally 7 to 10 days after transplant. And what is that? That's when in the donor unit, you have these lymphocytes that recognizes the A antigen, whether on the red blood cells or on the vessels, not drawn here or the lymphocytes recognizes the A antigen on the AB um, portion. And then these lymphocytes are gonna become plasma cells and they're gonna secrete antibodies against these antigens. And that's why it occurs later. Whoops, sorry, my slipper fell. Okay, uh, bidirectional ABO incompatibility. This is when you have both major and minor ABO incompatibility. For instance, the CM, the patient that was A pos, but then their sister, the donor, was B pos. That's uh, bidirectional. Um, so the complications are all the complications of both major and minor incompatibility. 
So for here, you have the B cells, you have anti-A attacking the A antigens, and then you have the anti-B from the recipient attacking the B antigens, and vice versa. So briefly speaking, transfusion during engraftment can be divided into three stages. One, part one is the preparative regimen when the patient receives chemotherapy. Part two is engraftment which isn't a one day thing, it could last several weeks. And part three is post engraftment. And the reason why it's important to distinguish these is you can give different transfusion products per stage. For instance, here is a diagram from Dr. Kopko. It's an excellent article. I would recommend um, reading it. Um, it's freely accessible. And then here you see phase one, phase three. And I think phase two is the most important because it's easy, relatively easy um, for phase one, whether it's major, minor, bidirectional incompatibility, you just give the recipient blood type. For phase three, you know, this is when engraftment is successful. And you can determine this by chimerism studies or the, the type in screen looks like your donors. You give the donor type, whether it be red blood cells, platelets, plasma, and whether they're major incompatible, minor incompatible, or bidirectional. Phase two is the difficult part. This is where my head hurts, so to speak, because the conceptual framework is kind of difficult. So briefly speaking, during phase two, the engraftment stage, for red blood cells, for major incompatibility, you give the recipient type. For minor incompatibility, you give the donor type. Bidirectional incompatibility, you give O. And then that's just for red blood cells. For platelets and plasma, major incompatibility, you give the donor type. Minor incompatibility, you give the recipient type. And bidirectional incompatibility, you give the AB type. So um, I hope this was a nice kind of overview of products to give for um, those who receive ABO incompatible allogeneic stem cell transplant. Thank you so much. I hope you all have a good holiday and stay safe. Bye.